G'day, g'day. It's Nick here, and this is the Inland Taipan, which if you've watched our recent video, you'll know is the most venomous snake on the planet. But in today's video, we're gonna talk about what does this actually mean? How do we measure toxicity? And then I'm gonna share with you five reasons why these lists mean bugger all. Stick around. So first off, is what do we mean when we say a snake is the most venomous or more venomous than another snake? And how do we measure toxicity? Now we did talk about this in the past, but the way we measure toxicity, not just in snakes, but pretty much all toxins, is a test that we call the LD50 test. And what this test entails is basically taking a certain amount of a toxin, be it snake venom or rat poison or bleach or pretty much anything, and uh, administering it to a test subject, usually a mouse, but it could be pretty much anything, and figuring out how little venom does it take to kill 50% of the subjects in a test. Now, depending on what you're testing, this toxin can be administered to the test subjects in a variety of ways. It can be done either subcutaneously, under the skin, intramuscularly, which means into the muscle tissue. It can be done into the body cavity. There's a bunch of different ways. But when we're talking about snake bite, what we're talking about is generally injecting the venom into a mouse subcutaneously, under the skin, in an attempt to most accurately represent or replicate what a real life snake bite would be. However, there is a couple of major problems with this method. The first one being that, while mice might be very useful test subjects for a variety of reasons, we are not mice. And it makes a lot of sense that snakes like this type in here, who live almost entirely off mice, will do very, very well on this test. But it's not a guarantee that that translates to how toxic something is to human beings. A great example is if we forget about snakes for a second and we talk about spiders, like this huntsman here. In the world of spiders, Arguably the most venomous spider to a human being on earth is the Sydney funnel web. The thing is, funnel web spiders have very, very little effect on mice. So if we did the traditional test using mice, then a spider that's actually very, very venomous to a human being wouldn't be considered very venomous at all. So while mice are certainly a very good uh, proxy for human beings in the vast majority of circumstances, problem number one we do need to remember, we are not mice. So it's not a guarantee that uh, we can take that test and apply it directly to a human being. The second problem with this way of categorizing how venomous snakes are is it fails to take into account the venom yield a snake is. So how much venom does a certain snake have at its disposal? If we look at the taipans, for example, the inland taipan we had before is somewhere between three and four times more potent drop for drop than this girl here, the coastal taipan. However, the coastal taipan has three to four times more venom in every single bite. And if we're talking about maximum venom yields, the coastal taipan has significantly more venom at its disposal. So yes, when we're comparing venoms drop for drop in a laboratory, this LD50 test makes a lot of sense. But if we start talking about sort of lethal doses per snake, suddenly it doesn't have a very real world application because the coastal taipan, while less venomous, has way more venom at its disposal. The third issue with this way of measuring toxicity in snakes is it doesn't take into account the speed of action. How quickly does the venom work? So if we were to take venom from this little eastern brown snake here and inject it into mice in a laboratory, they don't count how long they take to die. They just count whether they die or whether they don't die. And while in a real world situation with human bites, it's really hard to measure this stuff scientifically, there is some species of snakes that are fairly well known to have very fast acting venom. And maybe the best example would be things like the mambas. Now, if we're using traditional LD50 testing, the mambas do rank significantly less venomous than the famous Australian venomous snakes, the browns, the taipans, things like this. However, it's well known that their venom works very, very quickly. And in a real world situation, this time difference might be the difference with making it to first aid and not making it to first aid. So the third problem with uh, LD50 testing, it doesn't take into account how quickly does everything happen. The fourth issue with this method of testing is it fails to take into account what sort of horrible side effects and long-term complications can arise from a bite. With a lot of our very venomous snakes, like our brown snakes and our taipans, they have highly neurotoxic venom. Basically, they shut down your heart and your lungs, and if we can fix that, you're going to be okay. But some of our snakes, like the tiger snakes, for example, like this guy here, they place a very, very significant strain on your kidneys. So while you're probably gonna survive the bite if you get medical attention, you could have long-term complications for the rest of your life. If we take this thinking a step further and we go overseas and start looking at the vipers, things like the Gaboon Viper over in Africa, which has necrotic venom, basically you stand a very good chance of losing 
the limb that's bitten. So you're not just having to survive the initial bite, you can have secondary complications which may take your life or may make your life unlivable. So yeah, there is all sorts of side effects that this LD50 testing doesn't take into account and can give a false impression of some snakes that are on paper less venomous that are even more horrible bites than some of our more venomous snakes. The fifth and final problem with this sort of testing is it hardly matters. You see, if we take the four snakes that we've looked at in this video, the inland taipan, the coastal taipan, the tiger snake and the eastern brown snake, we're talking about tenths of a milligrams difference. When you take into account that they all have significantly more than they need to kill you multiple times over, you're essentially comparing what's worse, getting run over by a cement truck or getting run over by a rubbish truck. They are all capable of giving a lethal dose many, many times over. So the couple of milligrams doesn't make a difference. At the end of the day, how many times can you die? Just once. So there you go. While I think this LD50 test is really interesting, it's a great way of comparing snakes, it doesn't have a real world application. It's the result of our human desire to put things in lists, in nice neat categories, and uh, that's where it remains. With all that said and done, guys, this is the end of the video. So if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah, leave a comment down below, check on back next time, but between now and then, be nice to snakes, guys. Have a good one and take care.